welcome to On The Couch with Marcia M, the show where we talk about real issues with real people. Today we're speaking about moving on with the marvellous Sharon Warmington. Hi. Hi. And Clancy Williams. Hi. Hi. Okay, peeps. I'm going to start. Sharon, <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Don't apologize. Got these two ladies here. These You've been nominated for a Geraldine's Pearl Award by someone in the community, mm. which is wonderful. And that's an award for women who have great tenacity, strength, that have overcome lots of adversity, bounce back ability, a real Geraldine's Pearl woman. Okay. <laughs> so that's one of the things. But the other thing, Sharon, I have to just say it because there's one of your sayings that I absolutely love. Okay. And I like saying it anyway. So it's about, you know, this is about being a woman. This is about having strength. Mm. And if I could have done an award sh- um, award for that, I might do actually. <laughs> <laughs> I would. So the saying goes, and I'm going to speak into the camera with this. And what Sharon says is, she does have balls, but she wears them on her chest. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a power <coughs> statement, yeah. isn't it? Because Absolutely. there are conversations where you talk about having strength, having balls, mm-hmm. have you got the balls? And as women, you know, and as a woman. So Sharon, where did that come from? It actually came from when I was in manufacturing. Okay. I was um, seeking um, investment mm-hmm. from um, some really, really well-to-do people. And I was in an environment where I was surrounded by men all the time. And um, as you do sometimes in those situations, you're finding your feet and all of that. And I wasn't pushing myself forward enough. And it was one of the the guys around the table who said to me, Sharon, you've got the balls. They're just sitting on your chest. (laughs) So were you offended when you said that? No, I wasn't offended at all. I was a bit shocked. Mm. Um, and being the only woman in that environment, it was like, you know, is that PC? Can you really say that? Yeah. But then I began to embrace it mm-hmm. and take it as a statement for myself to say, you know, I can be in this environment. Yeah. I can do whatever a man um, does. Because the they tend to do it just, you know, as, as a right, as a birthright, mm. whatever it is they want to do. And so I started to embrace that attitude as well. This show is called Moving On. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, Sharon, how are you moving on and what have you moved on from? And where are you moving on to? Let's start with. What, 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 what. <laughs> I know you can call me three questions yeah. at the point time. <laughs> so, um, there's, different, there's different things that have happened in my mm. life um, over, over the years. Um, I grew up in a very poor area of the city, Mm -hmm. moved to a more affluent area of the city, Mm -hmm. and was told that I shouldn't aspire to be anything more than a factory worker. Okay, by? By my teachers. Um, um, You know, I was one of a handful of black children in my my school, Mm -hmm. but I was determined that that wasn't going to be my story, and my parents were also determined that that wasn't going to be my story. Mm -hmm. Um, So I decided that I wanted to be a PA, I was in love with Bobby Ewing at the time on Dallas, yeah. (laughs) And so I went in search of my Bobby Ewing. Didn't find him, but I married quite young. Mm -hmm. Um, Unfortunately, that turned into an abusive relationship. So so by the time I got to 30, I decided that I was going to leave. Mm -hmm. And then I got into business, and I've been in business now since since then. So my journey and my life has been evolving. I've had ups and I've had downs, Mm -hmm. but I'm definitely on the way up. Definitely. You, so Sharon, you lived a real full life. Oh, absolutely. I operate at 150 miles an hour. I recognise that not everybody operates at mm-hmm. that level, mm-hmm. but my level is 150 miles. And so my clients recognise that as well. And I, I'm very particular about who I take on board mm-hmm. because I recognise that the speed when at which I operate. When you say clients, what is it that you do? Coaching, consultancy, mm-hmm. training, personal development, mm-hmm. anything that is going to move you forward. Okay. I take people from where they are mm-hmm. to where they want to get to quicker than if they were to travel the journey alone. Yeah. But they have to be prepared to move. Yeah. They have to be. Fantastic. And why do you do this? What has equipped you to be the right person to do this? Well, my life experience, first and foremost. Just give, us, give me a little snippy. Come on. Okay. I've, um, I've made a lot of money. I've lost a lot of money. Mm. I've been homeless. Okay. I've made some major decisions that have affected my life and my children's life. 
when I decided to choose my business over my house, yeah. that was massive. Yeah. And it was my daughter who actually said to me, Mom, don't worry, when we're sitting in our big house, when we've made it, we won't even remember this. Right. We won't even remember this. And so I surround myself with people who can help me to grow. And because of the way I live my life, and I live a very public life, although I'm still a private person, mm -hmm. people um, engage with me and they want to work with me. They want to see how, I, how I've achieved what I've achieved and they want that for themselves. Okay. And I have this saying now that there's plenty of room at the top, it's the bottom that's crowded. Okay. So I tend to rise so um, Sharon, and pull up as I rise. What are your achievements? I've raised two beautiful children yeah. mm -hmm. who are now adults mm -hmm. and that was hard being a single yeah. mother. I decided that I was going to agree to joint residency with my children so mm -hmm. I didn't pull them away from their father mm -hmm. because that we became parents at exactly the same time. That's the way I saw yeah. it. And despite his abuse to me, he is father to my children. Mm -hmm. And so we raised them individually but together. Yeah. They are now adults and making their own way in life. My daughter's just graduated university and has started her own company. Mm -hmm. She invoices me, I have to pay her. Okay. Time. <laughs> Train and you other successes? <laughs> um, other successes that I've had, I've been on Dragon's Den. Mm -hmm. I've um, had investment from Secret Millionaires. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm currently in the process of writing my first book, following your lead. <laughs> um, but mm -hmm. now I'm changing my business model because I have to take my business online to reach a wider audience. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the, the journey that I'm on at the moment. Mm -hmm. But with everything that you do, it seems to be every 10 years, um, there's a, a reinvention yeah. of myself. Um, you know, Madonna's done it. Everybody, everybody who's who's achieved success does it. You look at your at your journey. You take what you need from the from the past, and you move forward with it, ever changing, ever evolving. Because the world in ten years will be so something Sharon, you won't recognise. Would you say yeah. you're a successful businesswoman? It depends on what you define you as define success. success. For exactly. me, success is being happy first and foremost, having health and well-being. Mm -hmm. Um, secondly, um, having peace in your life, and that I strive for yeah. passionately. Finance, some people determine their success by finance, um, but a million pounds to, to me may be different to somebody else. So I don't define so my do success. Set those type of, do you set those types oh, of financial targets? Oh, absolutely. How I'm, are you doing? With, I'm being nosy, come no. on. <coughs> I see you as one of these. This is one of the first millionaire women here around me. Right. Come on. Are you asking me if I'm a millionaire? How much money have you got? I'm not a millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. But Absolutely. with your targets, how my you target, doing? My target is, uh, I have my figure. Yeah. I try not to... Um, and you don't need to say no. what you're doing. No. The reason why I journey? don't, the reason why I don't use um, figures yes. to define, because people will define you by yes. that. Do you know what I mean? Yes. And I could say, yeah, five million would be great, but if Oprah had five million, she'd be pretty disappointed. Yeah, yeah. So it's all relative it to individuals. Mm. And you and you have to um, keep it real yeah. for you. And as we evolve anyway, figures just change. And and absolutely. The meaning of the money The first changes. million is the hardest. Yeah. That's fact. Yeah. But money attracts money mm -hmm. and money breeds money. Mm -hmm. We were just listening um, to Lisa Nichols um, in the car and um, they were talking about money and there's a difference between making money, mm -hmm. keeping money mm -hmm. and growing money. Mm. And so I I'm, in the, I'm, in, I'm between the making and keeping right now yeah. and then moving on to the yeah. growing because that's how you create wealth. Yeah. And I'm about creating legacy yeah. for my children and my children's children rather than leaving liabilities mm. because that's what we tend to do. Mm. We spend all that we have and we don't think about how we can use it to grow. Yes. And that's where I'm focusing. That's wonderful. So you moving on? Oh, you moved on from so I've moved, much. I've moved, I've moved and where on. are you now? How satisfied are you right now? I'm always satisfied. Somebody asked me a question recently, mm. um, you know, how, how on a scale of one to a hundred, mm -hmm. am I happy? Mm. I says, I spend 99% of my time in a happy place. That's 
wonderful. I really, really do. It doesn't mean that I don't get knocked off track. It yeah. doesn't mean that I don't have down days. Mm. But I never stay down for long mm. because you cannot grow yeah. or succeed yeah. in, in the mire. I've removed myself from toxic situations. Mm. I have clients who, if they don't serve my values or my ethos yeah. for my life, Money's not my driver like that. It doesn't matter how much money you're paying me. And I've literally sat some high paying clients because people feel that if they're paying you, then sometimes they can behave with you a certain way. And I don't do that. I've reached a point in my life where unless I buy into your values and you buy into mine, I don't want to associate myself with you because it can be a very toxic environment mm. and you've got to live a very clean mm. and pure life, in my, in my opinion. Thank you, thank you. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. Clancy, oh, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, we've never really sat down on the couch together before. Mm. So Clancy, you've had to again do some moving on and reflecting and overcoming yes. yourself. Yes, I have. So tell us. Well, it was interesting really listening yeah. to some of Sharon's story because I'm, I really am passionate also about when you have a certain life experience, people tend to define you mm. yes. through that experience. Yes. And my story is that in 2013 I was diagnosed with breast cancer right. and I had um, a mastectomy as a result of that and all the treatment that goes in between. But that's, for me, is the incident that then goes on to produce the rest of the story. Right. Um, because to me, the situation with the breast cancer wasn't the, isn't the journey, it's what you then go and do whilst you're going through that yes. and what you do as a result of that. Right. So, mm. you know. It, that doesn't define you at all. No, no. You are who you are, yeah. despite whatever the circumstances and what yes. life throws at you. Yeah, because it stays as a negative. If, you're only, if I'm only yeah. going to be defined as yeah. the woman who had breast, breast cancer, cancer and had a yeah. mastectomy, then that, you know, doesn't that doesn't feed my spirit to move me forward and but to then, fight that fight whilst I'm in that situation. Yeah. And Clancy, it is a fight. It, yeah. yeah. I was going to say, but then Clancy, there can be a woman over here that has breast cancer and then there's you that has breast cancer and the experience is completely... Very different. Completely yeah. different. Very, very different. different. And, and that was evident with mm -hmm. my situation because some people, they do have not just breast cancer, but other cancers, and they go through their treatment quite well, they mm -hmm. are at work, they're still mm -hmm. functioning. Mm -hmm. yeah, I didn't have that luxury. So was it was absolutely you? horrendous, and I can't put it any other way than that. Okay. It's as bad as they say it can be. Okay. But in that season of it being very bad, mm -hmm. one of the things, one of the, um, con it was actually one of my consultants said to me, you know, Clancy, this too will pass. And it's something that I have adopted ever mm -hmm. since ever since then. That's so, a marvellous. So language. that we don't get caught up in yeah. any one place yeah. or any one sense of utopia. Not when everything's mm. going well, we, we, we think it's gonna be like that yeah. all of the time and mm -hmm. then as it starts to dwindle away or circumstances happens and the and the environment and your situation changes, mm -hmm. that's how we end up taking those massive nose dives. Yeah. And that's where the mental health starts to get affected. But if we have a sense of actually this too will pass, not in a negative way, so that we can stay in that place, learn what we've got to learn in that particular mm -hmm. place, and then be able to have enough strength and reserve mm -hmm. in order for us to be able to move on. Mm. Yeah, that's so that, that, in the same way that you've got your mm -hmm. kind of um, saying, that saying has been yeah. quite instrumental, but not just for me, but also for within the work that I do, because I'm mm -hmm. a creative drama therapist. Okay. Um, and with the different client groups that I work with, mm -hmm. I'm able to, not just to say this too will pass, but I'm a living example of this situation you find yourself in will pass. So with your experience, your horrific experience with the, with the breast cancer, yeah. how long did that last for? Uh, I would say two years and I'm still at the stage where mm -hmm. um, I'm still undergo treatment. Okay. Um, it's medicated treatment mm -hmm. at the moment, so I've mm -hmm. kind of gone through my two years um, of clearance and it's five in total. But even that in itself, if you kind of get caught up with, yeah. oh, I've got to get through five years, you know, mm -hmm. you can yeah, put yeah. your life on hold for yeah. those five years until yeah. they give you the piece of paper that says, right, you can now go and live your life. 
when actually, no, you've got to live your life. From the minute right you've now. still got breath in your body, yeah. you live it accordingly. And like Sharon, you, you, there are knocks along the way. Mm. Even, you know, just because you get breast cancer, everybody doesn't stop being themselves, yes. which then has an impact on you, yeah. negatively and positively. Um, so, you know, you do have to just kind of make sure that you're um, working with the experience, mm. taking from it what you can. And for me, it's very much about, okay, so how is that then going to be relevant for me and my clients? Because you're sounding very controlled, very calm. <laughs> like, okay, yeah, in the moment, yeah. But really, no, no. come on. It, it's been a journey to get to this place yeah. and you know I, I think you know like Sharon I am able to say I've got two wonderful children yeah. who if it would be very it would have been easy for me to give up mm. if I didn't have those two mm. to keep fighting for yeah. and for those two who they kept fighting me. for me yeah. in the times when I couldn't do it and physically couldn't. and mentally couldn't do it so when I say it's as bad as it gets, it is as bad as it gets to, you know, you, you can be at the height of the treatment, yes. it, it lays you flat, yeah. literally it lays you mm -hmm. flat. And when you, you can do nothing. 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 How long? Just nothing. I, I would say it's, it's probably a year because when you yeah. have the, the, the treatment, mm -hmm. you then go on to have radiotherapy, yeah. you have your mistake, you know, and all the mm -hmm. things that come in between. Mm -hmm. And at each stage, it brings its yeah. different challenges. Um, and it, br it leaves you with different things as a result of having so much toxic medication. Because at the end of the day, chemotherapy is poison. Let's not, mm -hmm. you know, make any qualms about mm -hmm. it. So with that intense medication in your body, it is going to have and leave its side effects. Um, so, and as Sharon knows, you know, I've had to work around changing my business, changing the, the way that I do things, the way that I live. Um, and that's been a struggle because I was the person that was able to operate at, a, not yeah. 150, but I could do 100 <laughs> yeah. at 100 miles yeah. an hour and yeah. have all the balls yes. in the air. Yes. Um, and it takes one thing like that for them all to come crashing down. And you really have to be willing to acknowledge that life is going to be different. Well, what it sounds like is being able to get to that place of acceptance. Yes. That this is, this is where it's at, yeah. and it's either, what am I going to do, am I going to lay down and die, yeah. or am I going to keep going, yeah. you know, yeah, wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Um, I'm just reflecting, I'm just remembering when I, I have a neurological illness, okay. and I'm just remembering when I was ill, and it was such a frightening, frightening time yeah. for my children in yeah. particular. So although I went through the experience of being ill, I was the person that was ill, mm -hmm. I didn't really couldn't see what was happening for them. It's only yeah. now, yeah. as they say what their fears were, yes. yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm sitting Absolutely. here thinking, wow, it would have been great to have yeah. the children within this conversation. Yes. And when, when you were going through... When I was going through my, my situation yeah. and I didn't realise the impact it was having children. on my children until until much later mm. and that was why I decided to handle it the way I handled it mm. in terms of not using the children to fight my my ex-partner yeah. and allow them to make their own decisions yeah. Yeah. and even now they'll they'll say certain things to me and I'm like do you remember that mm. and it's like they remember everything, everything. Yes. and yes. it impacts each one although they were close it each it impacts them differently as yeah. well and it's been it's been aware of that yeah. as well yeah. but do you think Shannon I know I definitely feel this and you might mm. feel this as well Marcia that that situation has shaped the way that my children are oh now. absolutely their ability their thriving capacity and their ability to um deal with certain situations is, is a, a place where I, I certainly know yeah. I wasn't at when I was the, um, the resilience. At, yes. at their age yeah. and it kind of you're right in the sense when you say long after you kind of come through the, the kind of danger part mm. you start to have those reflective conversations with yes. them and it, it was one of the days when I was talking to my children and they actually said to me and I had no idea of this mm. whilst I was going through my treatment mm. and they were up and down at the hospital and things like that. Mum, we, we, we did actually think you were going to die. My children said that to and me I too. Thought, wow. 
you, you, you no. can't no. imagine no. that, that really weight for exactly. them mm. yeah. whilst you're not able because yeah. you know we, we're three yeah. strong black women we're there to protect our children <laughs> yeah. you know what, yeah. what is this that you then find yourself in such a I found myself in such a vulnerable situation yeah. and position that and, and their father wasn't with me mm. um, sadly but you know they took on the role and the responsibility of running the home, mm. running me. Um, you know, my daughter wants to be a, um, a midwife, so she had the, the chart out with all the mm. medication that I had to take. And, mm -hmm. you know, and my son just came into his own mm. right before yeah. my eyes. Yeah. It kind of transformed into yeah. these adults Adult. that you think, yeah, when on earth did that happen? Mm. So then when you get better and you try to want to claim some yeah. of that back. <laughs> 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 Hold on a yes. minute, but I was doing this yes. when you were. Mm, so, yes. can you, it, it, and that yeah. that I found a challenge mm. to kind of have to sit back and think. You have to change yeah. the relationship that you have with them because they're yes. adults. Yeah, and, and giving them that there's that respect now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They've they've actually earned. They're entitled yeah. to, and they've probably had experiences that we haven't had. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I haven't been in a situation where I've thought my mum's going. Yeah, to no. So, yeah, yeah. and e and equally to be able to to sit back and to be able to say, if nobody else says it to mm. you, for you to be able to say, actually, do you know what, I've done a good job. Yeah. This situation has That's happened, true. but actually I've done a good job. Mm, and right. the testimony of that is their ability to cope and thrive yeah. as a result yeah. of That's that. That's exactly right. So if well, I don't do like anything that. else after today, I've done my part. Yeah. And what you now go on and do is you must take responsibility for it because Mm. I feel that I've done as much mm. as I could possibly have done. So this teaches us about life, really. Mm. That um, no matter what the obstacles or challenges, and it, no matter what age you are, there are ways, there are resources that we have as individuals. Yeah. There are ways that we can come through. But come through much more powerful. Mm. Yet again, this is just reminding me of one of my favourite phrases, which is about also the power of vulnerability. Yes. Mm. That it is okay, you can yeah. be a powerhouse yeah. woman, yeah. but still you're a real person, an authentic real person yeah. that's real about real issues. Mm. Because you, you cannot be strong all the time and we tend to take on that mantle yeah. and that we can do anything and, mm. and you know, and it kills us. Yes. yes. It literally that cripples and it us. Is, it is and, killing and, us, yeah. And it keeps us in a place where, where We've got nowhere to go, and we're scared to talk to anybody. Because you're you constantly know, hiding. Hiding, yeah. And you've got to, you've got to reach a point where you stop doing that. And what I have also tried to do is to show my daughter and my son that it's okay to show your vulnerability. It's okay to be upset about something. It's okay not to be good at everything because you can't be. And you know, it's about raising them to understand that life is life, you're yes. dealing with things all the time, yeah. you roll with the punches, yes. you know, and you and you smell the roses along the journey. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Wow, life is life, roll with the punches and smell the roses along the journey. You've been listening to myself, you've been watching <laughs> myself, Sharon Warmington and Clancy Williams, talking about life, motherhood, and just rolling with the punches on the couch with Marcy. <laughs>